In this video, I'm going to be talking about what a TCP window is. Now, the concept of a TCP window is actually fairly simple. Um, we're going to be starting off what a TCP congestion window is. A congestion window is also, you can kind of also think of it like the send window. So a congestion window is, let's say, a burst of packets that gets sent out from the sending device and then the sending device waits to get all of the acknowledgements back from the receiving device before it can send another burst. So burst wait, then the then the acts come back, then another burst, the acts come back, another burst. And that's really the core concept of a window. But the size of the window is what's important. So the amount of packets in a, in each burst is what is critical to how modern networks function. So let's say we have a burst of 10 packets. So what TCP will do, we'll send 10 packets all at once. So say the window, yeah, let's say, okay, the window is 10 packets large. So you have 10 packets worth of data that gets sent all at once. And now it's going to send the packets as quickly as it possibly can. It's going to hit the receiving device. And as soon as that receiving device can, it's going to begin generating the acknowledgements. Now that's whether the entire window has been received from re receiving device or not. So let's say you even can have a window of, um, let's say 4,000 packets. So 4,000 packets get sent at once. So it's not like all 4,000 packets get slammed into the receiving device and then acknowledgements start getting generated, it's the receiving device is going to begin generating those acknowledgements as soon as it possibly can. So you're literally going to have sending packets and acknowledgements passing each other. Okay, so bi-directional communication. So and that's going to be happening mostly on really large windows. But what's in the important concept of a window is the size of the window is going to determine your throughput. And here's how this works. Let's say you have uh, a thousand packets worth of data to send. So roughly 1.46, whatever, 1.4 megabytes, basically. So you you want to send 1.4 megabytes. Now, if you have 10 packet windows, you're going to have to send, well, 100 windows. Well, if you have, um, a 50 millisecond round trip time, because remember, uh, I'm going to, okay, let me back up a little bit. So each, uh, each window is going to be separated from round, uh, by re one round trip time. So from the moment the last byte is sent from the sender, it takes the time to get to the receiving device and then the time for the acknowledgement to come back that's a round trip time. So remember the sending device will stop and it will stop for the duration of the round trip time. Now round trip time is you might be more familiar with ping. So when you ping something, you're not just touching another host, you're actually measuring round trip time so that there and back round trip time RTT. Okay. So let's get back to the example. So for, um, you have a thousand packets to send and let's say each window is, let's say we have a fixed window of, um, of, of 10 packets per window. And let's say you also have a 50 millisecond round trip time. Now I'm going to try and not confuse everybody with my, my terrible math skills. But so what's going to happen is to send all 1.4 megabytes with a one, uh, with a 10 packet window, it's going to be, well, the round trip time times the number of windows, which is, um, which is a hundred. So that's going to be 50 times 100, which is 5,000. That's 5,000 milliseconds. So five, it's going to take a full five seconds. I think I did that right. Five seconds to transfer 1.4 megabytes. That's not great. If you think about it, that's not very good. Maybe if it was 1998, yeah, that'd be phenomenal. Okay. Now let's say you have a window size of a hundred packets. So now you only have 10 round trip times and 10 round trip times, 10 times 50 is 500 milliseconds. So instead of taking five seconds, it now takes half of a second to send the same amount of data. So the bigger the window size, the, the more the throughput, the faster things go. Now the window sizes are rarely fixed. Now I'll, I'm going to give some examples later of, of where they are fixed. Um, well, one example, um, but the window size is almost always going to be going up and down and up and down. And it's rarely the same size for each window size. Now, what that is, is TCP adjusting to network conditions. Um, and 
It's trying to discover something that's something, well, sort of. It's trying to maximize, it's TCP is trying to, 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 to use as much bandwidth as possible, to, to send as quickly as possible. That's TCP's job, to send as quickly as possible. Um, now, the estimate on how quickly a, T a TCP can send is something known as a bandwidth delay product. So bandwidth times delay equals the, the, the biggest window size. Now, if you consider a, a network to be a storage medium, so like a flash drive or something, what TCP tries to do is tries, it tries to discover the capacity of that storage medium and it then attempt to fill it up. Now, with a window, that large window, even if it reaches that maximum window size, it's going to be only at that maximum window size for you know, a microsecond or so. Um, but still, that is the fastest throughput. So TCP is trying to fill up the capacity of that network. Because if you think about it, the network is actually a storage medium. Um, very, very temporary, but it is. Uh, uh, electrical signals live in the cabling, live in the switches, live in the routers, lives in all that stuff for a, 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 a finite amount of time. Um, and so it, it's TCP trying to to consume that storage medium and fill up that capacity. Think about this. I like to think of TCP as like a train. Now, um, let's let's picture in your head a a set of train tracks. So you have train tracks with a tunnel on one side and a tunnel on another side. So the tunnel on one side is going to be this where the train comes out of. The tunnel on the other side is going to be where the train. Um, enters. So sender and receiver. Now the length of track is going to equal the network and the longer the track or the shorter the track is going to equal the delay. How, because it takes longer for a train to traverse longer track. So if a track is longer, it's going to be more delay. Okay. Bear with me. I know this is kind of confusing. Well, what the bandwidth delay product is, is if you take a train and say the train is each car equals one packet and you put a train from tip to tail touching each tunnel, that's going to be the bandwidth delay product. That's going to be the absolute maximum size of each window until failure can happen. Okay, so that's the maximum throughput of a network path between two hosts is that is 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 that size of window. So if the maximum size of a window is Bandwidth times delay. Well, okay. In our example, where does bandwidth come in? So bandwidth would be like, um, increasing the number of tracks and increasing the number of trains. So lining up more trains side by side. So you can see how you have, you can, you, you can increase the, the size of the window immensely by adding more bandwidth. So if you can also increase the size of the window by making the track longer, by adding more delay, um, that seems so it seems uh, it, that was something that uh, confused me at first is what on a slower network why would you want bigger windows well let's say you have a wi a wireless network that um has a really high delay like 3g or 4g or something really high delay but it has high bandwidth so like 4g is really high delay but high bandwidth well um because the distance the round trip time is so vast, is so huge. So it's like a hundred, sometimes 150, 200 millisecond round trip time. And that's one fifth of a second between each window. So in order to get the high throughput, you're going to have to increase the size of the window. It, because the penalty for traversing that network is so high, the only way to create the throughput needed is to, is to make the windows bigger. And that's possible with the higher bandwidth. Okay, so for an example, um, what I've done is I've created a capture. I've created a capture and I set the delay on the receive interface to a full two seconds. Now, what this will do is it will give, give us a nice two second delimiter between each window. So we can clearly see the send window because normally in Wireshark, the, the, the send windows are, or the congestion windows are really hard to actually spot. It's, probably impossible because everything is so jammed together because your your round trip times are so um are so small typically that to actually set to see each window as they progress through your capture is really hard and I've not been able to do it without 
a bit of a hack. So setting on a 2000 millisecond delay on the receive device, we get a clear delimiter between each window. And so what you see here is what I've done here is I've created a column. I've created a comment between each window from the, the first packet in the window. I've created a comment and then I created a column for the comment. And in the comment, I put the, um, the, the size of the window in bytes and the size of the window in packets. Now, how I've come across that number was I took the, the, the last sequence number minus the first sequence number. And that gave me the number of bytes because remember sequence numbers equal bytes. So each sequence number equals one byte. So the last in the window, right before I hit that two second mark minus the first in the window gives us the total number of bytes that are being transferred in each window. Okay. So now I have that number. Now, what I've also done is I've broken it up into individual packets. Now you can't just simply count each packet. If you've done any captures in Wireshark, you know that Wireshark doesn't necessarily capture unless you're using a tap, unless you're using a network tap, it doesn't necessarily capture each individual packet. It captures what it can and breaks it up what it can. The sequence numbers are accurate and everything else is accurate, but the actual number of packets. So we can't just simply count packets. That doesn't work because of something called a uh, segmentation offload. And if you're interested in, in understanding that, just Google search segmentation offload or TSO and the, there'll be a description of of why Wireshark doesn't capture an equal number of packets when you capture on a host. Anyway, regardless. So what I've done is I took the number of bytes and I'm, and I've divided it by, um, 1448. Now, what is that number 1448? Well, remember we, we have an MSS. MSS is, um, the maximum number of bytes in e the maximum number of payload bytes in each packet. And, and I start off with 1460. Well, I'm running Linux. Linux uses the timestamps option and two other options. And so it's, I'm going to have to minus 12 bytes from 1460 because it's cutting into that data payload. So that's how I equal, I get the number 1440. So it's 1460 MSS minus the options 1448. Okay. I think I just said 1440, but it's 1448. So if I take the total number of bytes in each window, divide that by 1448, I get the number of packets and you can see the first one is 10, and that's exactly as expected. Linux uses something known as IW10, initial window 10. So the first window that's going to be sent is, um, well, in, in a large bulk transfer, um, is going to be 10 packets. Okay. Now, scrolling down, we see the next one is going to be double that, 20 packets, and then 40 packets and then 80, and then 160, and then 320, and it goes up from there. And so the window is inflating. The TCP window is growing and it's growing exponentially. It's growing, well, not, yeah, it's growing, it's growing, it's doubling each time. So what that is called is called TCP slow start. And it's not really slow because it's doubling, but it's slower than what it used to be. But I'll go into that in a later video. But it, it, it it's what TCP is doing at this point is it's basically um, uh, establishing reliability of that path. It's, it's testing the waters. It's, it's seeing how fast it can send before, um, before failure happens. And it's, so it's purposely inducing failure. It's purposely inducing packet loss. So it's inflating that window so, f so quickly that it's, being, it's going to attempt a baseline. And when failure does occur, when loss does occur, it, there, TCP's got its baseline. It now knows roughly the, the, in the current network conditions, how fast it can possibly sit. So zoom, the, the size of the windows grows really quickly. And so all the way down at the bottom, I think it gets up to a full two megabytes in one window. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop right there because TCP congestion control is a huge topic and TCP windows are, um, and managing those windows is core to that huge topic. I don't want to get too far into packet loss because packet loss is, and dealing with packet loss is, is a, also a huge topic. So I think I'll end right there. Okay, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.